Hey, this is Mikey with another After Effects tutorial. Today we're going to be doing some experiments with the uh, wiggle and repeat inside of shape layers. There's a lot of stuff you can do with this, um, and it's kind of a new technique that I've discovered about using the wiggle transform and the repeater inside of a shape layer and, and as far as how you stack them. And you can get things like, like this going on, uh, this which kind of looks like a screensaver from the 90s. Uh, this weird thing going on, it's kind of like a, a twisty intestine. You could build, um, you know, like a, a vector lens flare using the same techniques. This tutorial is brought to you by Envato Elements. And what Envato Elements is, is they've taken the best of best of all they have to do. Now, I'm sure you know Envato. Um, they've got lots of templates and uh, stock elements and music and all that kind of stuff. They've taken the best of best of what they have, and you can see over 700,000 um, assets they have here. And they've put it together into a monthly subscription. Really good price, $16.50. And it's just unlimited downloads of all those things. Now, disclaimer, I am an affiliate with this. So by using the link in the description, it does help out this channel uh, so I can be able to put out more uh, tutorials on a timely basis. So if you do uh, need this and you're looking into uh, buying Envato Elements and signing up as a subscription, please consider using the link in the description and help me out. So we're going to kind of experiment. Uh, and you may not, I may not make all of these same things, but what I will do is I will save this project file and uh, see all these things that I've made. Um, but it's using um, all the same kind of techniques. And later on, I do plan on making a full featured uh, lens flare, a vector lens flare preset. Um, again, but um, you can make it yourself if you want. So let's start with a new composition and just kind of show what I'm talking about. All right, let's call this wiggle repeat. Give it a background color. All right. So let's first bring in a shape. And I like to bring in um, the polygon tool, uh, the polygon shape, just because there's a lot more you can do with it after the fact. So let's uh, make sure that in the position down in the transform is zeroed out. Because um, I can, if I crank up the points, it looks like a circle. So I've got a circle or a shape, or I can turn it into a star. So if I just did a circle, then, well, I'm kind of stuck with that. And let's go in and bring the radius down a little bit. So first thing I'm going to do is add a repeater. And this is something you've done before. And I can add more copies. And then what I want to do is add this wiggle transform. A lot of people have played around with wiggle paths. You can see what it does is it, it wiggles the path and you can kind of create this kind of a look to it. Smooth it out. But what I want to show you is the wiggle transform. And when you add it by default, it does a weird thing. Oh, let's Make sure we put it inside of this poly star. Is where it sticks it. Is it, it, it usually sticks it above the repeater. So if I were to come in here and transform, say, the position, then it's wiggling where that is in the position. But it sticks it above the repeater. Now, if we take that and drag it below the repeater, it does a cool thing where it will wiggle each um, iteration in the repeater differently, which is really cool. So I can come into this repeater, and let's take this transform, let's, let's bring it a little bit closer, add more copies, and look what we got going on. I'm going to take the size of this polystar down. Now let's talk about some of the um, some of the features in this wiggle transform. First, we have the wiggles per second. That's pretty obvious. How much does it wiggle every uh, second? So this is it, two wiggles per second. Uh, correlation. Now what correlation is, is how much of the wiggle of the, this first one is influencing the next one. And this is a 50% correlation. So if we do this at zero, then each iteration of the repeater is going to just wiggle on its own, and there's nothing that's going to be related to the other one. If we go all the way up to 100%, 
then they are going to be 100% tied to each other. But if we go somewhere in the middle, uh, well, well, let's go close to 100%. So let's uh, put the correlation almost to 100%. Let's do, say, like 95, and let's see what it does. As you can see, they are a lot more closer. Um, let's let's go in and take this repeater, and let's um, let's make them closer together. All right, and we can add more repeats. And you can see it's starting to create this kind of this cool look. Now, something fun is let's take the wiggles per second and make that zero. And then we've got this temporal phase and the spatial phase. The temporal phase is just going to wiggle it as you saw as we uh, scrub through that. But the spatial phase will make it look more like a wave. Okay. Now let's come in here and take this position on the repeater down to zero. And the correlation to 99, and you can see it's creating kind of this um, worm effect. And if we, if we scrub through the spatial phase, you can see it's creating kind of what we did here in this worm effect. So let's actually do this to say 98. Now in this example, um, the closer the correlation is to 100, the tighter um, it's going to be. So if we go to 95, you can see how everything uh, kind of moves further apart. And let's add to the spatial phase time times 500. So it can automatically kind of move. Let's do that a little faster. 1,000. decrease the amount of copies. Now if we were to take this and change the you know the position make it wider then it's going to be a lot more crazy. Now you can see that these these circles are you know not overlapping each other and again like I had said how to fix that is with the correlation. So let's go to 99 you see those are a lot closer together. And in this example, the correlation is going to just make everything closer together, but it's gonna, still going to follow the same wiggly path. So if you want that um, worm uh, <laughs> line thing to be longer, we would just increase the repeats. And if you want that resolution to be tighter, then we can go into the correlation, say 99.5. And you can see it's a lot tighter. So this is kind of creating the worm effect. Pretty cool. And we can also come in add to this uh, temporal phase. Add an expression to that times, you know, time times 100. And it's going to make everything kind of move a little bit. So this is something fun to experiment with. We can also come in um, down to this wiggle transform and we can change the scale. So sometimes it's going to be bigger, sometimes it's going to be smaller. Change the anchor point and say rotation. And there's a lot of cool stuff. ends up looking really cool. All right, so let's go in and um, let's reset everything. Okay, so my wiggle transform is reset to zero. And now let's go into the repeater and the position of the repeater. Let's bring this to like uh, something a little more manageable, 10 repeats. I want to show you uh, two little tricks. First, we want to keep this centered. Um, so um, the offset is right in the middle. And how you do that is yeah, an expression. So it's option. Click on that stopwatch. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take that number of copies. And let's minus one. 
Almost there. Then we're going to take the whole thing, put it in parentheses, and then divide that by negative 2. And what that does is it always keeps it centered. So as I add more, take away, it keeps it centered. So what we can do with that is let's add to this effect expression controls point control. And we're going to work on setting up um, this point control for the lens flare. And how that works is with this position in the repeater and this position. So let's go into the position. We're going to add an expression here. And this needs to be in square brackets. Uh, because it's an array with two points, we need to put this in square brackets. So I'm going to start and close my square bracket. And inside, let's uh, put this in parentheses and go inside that parenthesis. And we're going to take this comp dot width divided by 2. And we're going to minus this first point, which is 640. And then outside of the parenthesis, we're going to divide that by the offset. And hit comma. Open and close parentheses, and we're going to do the same thing, but a little bit different. This comp dot height divided by two. And then we're going to minus the second number of that point. Go outside of that parentheses and divide by that same offset. Okay. Now what we have that should work is I can take this point, and it will mirror that point of the of this array of, of these repeats is that first one and so I can move it around and it'll always be matched to that now what we can do is go into this wiggle transform make sure that the wiggles per second is off and then just adjust the scale let's go back into the poly star and make this say six points and let's remove the fill And you can see that's starting to look a little bit like a lens flare. Now, something cool with this is when we have this set up where the end repeater is right on that point, then as we add more repeats to it, it'll just fill up everything in between. And then we can also change the correlation. Now let's set that to you know 95 and then you can see it's starting to look really cool and this is the spatial we can change the spatial phase to kind of run through it or we can change the temporal phase to adjust you know what the randomness looks like we'd also come into this repeater and add a little bit of a rotation Let's say just two degrees. Well, you can see what happens is it'll rotate. Or you can change its anchor point. Let's rotate that one degree. And let's. You can also come into the anchor point down here in its position, and you can create all sorts of cool effects. This is something really to kind of experiment with. So let's go back to before I added all of that extra stuff, back to where it looked more like a lens flare. Now what I want to show you is how you can easily add additional elements to this. So let's come up to this poly star and let's just name that, you know, flare. And if I duplicate that, let's come into flare two, come down to the repeater, and let's just set it to one. And then let's uh, turn that into a circle and let's make it bigger. Now I can change where this is located at, let's say just by the offset.
go in negative two. You can see it put it right there. And let's let's come in and fill that up so it's a little bit easier to see. Or maybe come in and take that fill and bring the opacity down. And there's another element. What we can also do is instead of uh, making that a circle, let's turn that into a star. Let's take the inner inner radius down, outer radius out. Let's give it you know seven points. And now we have you know a little star. And if I wanted to, let's go in and affect. Um, let's add the uh, a slider and let's go to the offset hook it to that slider and let's do something like divide it by say 100 and then we can have a nice smooth motion uh, you know exactly where we want that placed so if I wanted to actually place every single element, I can just keep on copying this flare, uh, bring it down to one element, and do the same thing. Just attach each of them to a different slider. And that is building, you know, a vector lens flare. So that is that. We did a lens flare. We did something like this. That's wormy. So, did you learn something new? Did you um, figure out something you can do with this? Again, this is just kind of experiments, um, but there are some fun stuff you can do. Um, some of these, ex you know, things I showed you, and I and I will be developing this further to create a vector lens flare. But if you want to create one on your own, uh, go for it. So this has been experiments with the wiggle transform and the repeater inside of shape layers and it's it's pretty powerful you can do a lot of cool stuff with this so i highly encourage you to just jump into after effects dive in and try this out and if you create something amazing please share it with me i'd love to see it and if you have any questions comments or even some you know tutorial requests put those down in the comments below and uh, i'd love to hear from you thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time